Good morning, everybody. Hey, good to see you. Uh, getting back into the school year routine, I think, for most families, most, most of us. And so we're starting the new uh, series here this month called No Offense. And I don't mean it like no offense, but uh, yeah, uh, not giving offense, but I'm talking about receiving offense. How do we not take on offense? Because I don't know if you've noticed it, like <laughs> I have. It seems like there's a lot of people that are really easily offended. I'm like a hair trigger of anything. Boom, they're hot. They're mad. They're offended. So whatever happens in the culture affects us, uh, affects our worldview, affects our you know, relations, our conversations, the way we think. So how can we be really good examples to, uh, well, as Christians, but to our families, but to our neighbors, and, and not be so easily offended by everything. And I want to give credit to an author, uh, Brant Hansen, wrote a book called Unoffendable. Unoffendable. It was a few years ago, but I just read it this summer. And he actually says this in his book. He actually has the audacity uh, to say that you can be unoffendable. Now, the first time I read that kind of offended me because <laughs> I thought, Brant has no idea how many crazy people are in my life, and they, they're always right, and they're always loud, and they're always opinionated, and they just go on and on and on and on. Come on. you got to be kidding me. But if you want to learn more about being unoffendable, I'd recommend this book. It's a quick, easy read. It's kind of fun, funny stories. Uh, but at the very minimum, I'm borrowing some of his ideas. I want to make sure I give him uh, a credit for this. So uh, we're, we're going to give an overview today, and then the next few weeks, uh, Pastor Jeremy and I are going to kind of break it down in a little more details. So we're just going to start off today with talking about Stop Being Offended. That's the title for our message today. Stop Being Offended. Now I'm going to let you know, I'm just going to lay it all out there. All right, we're going to just let you, we're going to try to offend you, okay? We're going to try to get every one of you at one point or another with the goal of helping you get over being offended, get over getting angry, maybe even get over being unforgiving of other people. Being offended, it's a, I'm actually not that, easily offended. I've got really thick skin, actually. So, but I'm still going to try to relate this to you about stop being offended. Um, well, okay, I will say, uh, if somebody hurts my wife, right, hurts her feelings, makes her cry, hurts, or hurts my kids, obviously, I'm going to get, you know, riled up about that. But other than that, I don't, I'm not easily offended. Well, and a friend, of course, too. If a friend, somebody betrays one of my friends or hurts them, other than that, uh, I'm not easily offended. Oh, well, unless you criticize my church, obviously, the, or or my sermon, or my outfit, uh, or okay, maybe I am easily offended. As it turns out, uh, maybe this, maybe that's a natural thing uh, uh, to be offended. So we're gonna start off with this big thought here for the whole series, right? And uh, James, James was a half brother of Jesus, kind of older, younger brother of, of Jesus, growing up, knew him really well, and uh, actually some points in the Gospels, you, you hear about James and his brothers and his family uh, thinking that Jesus was crazy and trying to get Jesus to stop preaching, come back home with us, stop bothering these people, and then something happened that completely turned James' perception of Jesus around. James ended up being the, the key leader in the church in Jerusalem after Jesus' crucifixion. James was a leader in, in the whole Christian church in Jerusalem. And you gotta think, what happened? What, what turned him around like that? It was his, Jesus' resurrection, right? I mean, what, what would it take to convince you, right, that a sibling of yours is actually the son of God, <laughs> right? It had to be something absolutely miraculous, spectacular, unquestionable. Uh, so James, with this fire, this love he has for Jesus, his Lord and his Savior, he talks about not just listening to Jesus' words, 
not just listening to the word of God and knowing the commandments and all this, but doing them, how important it is to put it into practice. And that's what he writes about in this letter. And this is kind of an overarching thing, really, for if we could get this right, uh, we'd probably get most everything else right. We just focus on this. But uh, James, he says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. It sounds like that's pretty smart, right? But look around. Is that what people are like? Is that how we behave? I don't know. What I see for most people is that they don't listen at all, right? And they're really quick to speak their opinion and bloviate. And they are, they got a hair trigger to get offended and get angry and get mad. Before you know it, they're blowing up. That's what I see. But as followers of Jesus, as we listen to his word, he calls us to live a life where we are quick to listen to other people, slow to speak, push our opinions, and very slow right, to become angry. Now, Jesus walked the earth. He lived this out so beautifully. And uh, you probably don't know this because you're probably not a nerd like I am, uh, but how many questions do you think that Jesus was asked as in, as we have recorded in the Gospels, uh, how many questions were directly asked of Jesus? I'm going to give you the answer. It's 183. Okay? 183 questions get recorded. People directly asked Jesus. Now, how many of those questions do you think Jesus directly answered? Three. Only three questions questions. Of all 183 asked, Jesus directly answered their specific question. Now, while Jesus was asked 183 questions, how many questions do you think Jesus asked of other people? It's 307. Over 300. And why is that? Because Jesus was incredibly others-focused he was literally quick to listen to other people, slow to speak, obviously slow to become angry. That's a model. That's the model of how to share God's love and his grace and the gospel with other people. And that's our most important, most important task here on this earth, to share the gospel. Now, I've also noticed, sometimes in myself, but I think when I see people on TV or whatever, I see them getting so angry, it looks to me like they really enjoy it. Maybe it's cathartic. Um, now, I, no, I'm not saying that they enjoy the thing that they're mad about, but I, I think they get something, some kind of reward for really blowing up and lashing out over that thing that just really just eats them up. And the thing is that everybody has their one issue. You know? Every, everybody's got an issue. Out of, the, out of the hundreds of issues that they're at, everybody's got their own. Their own one that just boy, that just torques me. That just sets me off. Boy, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to make this right. I'm going to tell them why they're wrong. And we've got all, all these different people with all their own one-issue things, right? And so it's this cacophony of yelling and screaming about everything under the sun, and it just never stops. Maybe it feels good for a moment, Right, to just let somebody have it. Or just, boy, I proved my point. Ha, I won that debate. But let me just be honest with yourself and ask yourself, when you're angry, how does that usually work out for you? When, you? when you lose your cool, you lose your temper, you get so offended you just can't hold it in. How does that work out for you normally? Is that a... Does that make your children want to 
emulate your, 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 your love and your relationships with people, and how you treat people? Does it, when you're angry and you lash, does that win people over to your side? Does that help them see the light? Ah, oh, you're right, I understand now. Does it, does it help people see the goodness of God? Does it help people realize the love that God has for this world in Jesus Christ? Does it help? Well, I'll answer. This is a spoiler alert for you. According to scriptures, it does not. Uh, the very next verse there in James, verse 20. Because human anger does not, it does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Your human anger over the little offenses or your anger over the huge betrayals, your anger does not, it will not, it cannot produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, if you're like me, you might want to push back a little bit at this point and say, well, hold on now, but but I have righteous anger. See? See, I am angry. I am offended over sin. Mm. Well, it's a funny thing about righteous anger is when we are righteously anger over someone's sin, I've noticed it's always someone else's sin. So maybe, just maybe, it's not really righteous anger. Maybe more often it's self-righteous anger. I mean, it's, it's easy to get uh, angry and, and talk about and uh, try to correct someone else's uh, arrogance, right? But then not really notice my own pride. Hmm. Or I can get really offended at someone's foul language, but I don't even notice my gluttony. H have I offended you yet? Because I'm coming for you. All right, before it's all said and done, coming for every one of you. Righteous anger. No, no. Um, now, Jesus, we got that one example, right? turning over the tables, the money changing the tables in the temple, righteous anger, righteous indignation. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Jesus can have self-righteous anger because he is righteous. Hmm? And we're not. So we have to make a decision when we get angry. Someone offends us, something offends us, immediately we need to start thinking about what how am I going to react? How am I going to do the word of God? And the decision has to be, it's real simple. Do I want to make a point or do I want to make a difference? Do I want to try to win an argument or do I want to try to win a person over to see the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because so I don't want my peripheral issues, right, to, to overwhelm and to trump my uh, God-given mission to share the love and the mercy and the grace of God in Jesus Christ. That's, the, that's all of our most important missions. And the, the way we can do that, of course, rather than being uh, led by our feelings that you know, will direct the actions that we take, we want to be led by the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God direct our actions, our doing of His Word. And again, if we are if, if our deepest desire is to change other people's hearts. So uh, all of the things that they do or say or vote for or, or, or write about uh, or protest or counter protest, all of those things come from what? The, the heart, right? And, and that's our ultimate goal is to, to bring Jesus into their hearts. And I I've, I've, don't think I've ever seen anybody had a change of heart because they were yelled at or they were judged, or they were criticized, or they were blasted, lambasted. That doesn't change anybody's opinion, right? 
people will just, you start swinging, they're just going to build up the wall. It's natural. They're going to want to defend themselves. But you know what I have seen, and it's glorious. I've seen people completely change their hearts with love, with empathy, having conversations. We listen, listen to them. They let their guard down. If we're willing to listen to them, guess what? Most people in the world are reasonable. They'll want to listen to you too. And that's the opportunity uh, to share the good news and share the truth that we have in Jesus Christ. So how do we not get so offended? How do we uh, let go of anger? Two thoughts for you. Two thoughts. And the first one is lower your expectations of other people. I know, I said that out loud. Seriously, just lower your expectations of other people because other people are going to let you down. They are not going to call you back. Other people will forget your birthday. Other people are not going to show up to your shower even though you went to their shower. Uh, it's, it happens. It happens. And what I hear often and what we need to stop saying is, I can't believe she forgot me. i so shocked that he would, well, I've never heard of a Christian who would talk this. Stop. Stop being so shocked. Okay? Sinful people do sinful things, and we're all sinful. So you know, lower our expectations. Now, if you're curious about other people and what other people are like, it's pretty cool. An older pastor named Paul wrote a letter to a younger pastor named Timothy. And he said, let me just set your expectations for what this is going to be like. Uh, living with, working with, ministering to people. The second Timothy chapter 3. He says, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Oh, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And you're upset because they didn't read your email? What, what can we expect from other people? Not more than we expect from ourselves. So here's what happens. If you expect other people to do exactly what you want them to do, you're going to be hurt. But if you expect people to do exactly what you've done, well, there you go. And again, Jesus lived this out. Jesus, oh. Jesus, three years living with these 12 men. I, I can't believe he never just lost it on these guys. I mean, they asked him all kinds of crazy questions. They got confused. They tried to walk away. They got fights with each other. And then uh, one time they got in a little argument and debate among themselves about who's going to be the highest ranked of all these disciples here, all 12 of us. Who's going to be the best? Who's going to get to sit at your right side and your left side? Who's going to be really elevated and praised in the kingdom of God to come, huh? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? I can't believe he didn't lose it on him. Say, are you kidding me? Have you listened to anything I've been talking about? Just get out of here. Go. Follow somebody else. I mean, do you have any idea what I'm about to do? Hmm. But he never did that. He just loved them. He was never shocked by their self-centeredness. He was never scandalized by immoral behavior. He just loved people. Just loved them. So if we're going to let go of anger, if we're not going to be the ones that are so sensitive and easily offended, number one, we're going to lower our expectations of other people because sinful people do sinful things. And I'm not going to do anything that I haven't done at one point or another to somebody else. And that's why point number two is so important. 
We're going to raise our gratitude for the grace of God. We're going to raise our gratitude for the grace of God. Now, how many of you out there today, you can raise your hands if you want to, and you probably should be pretty proud, so just go ahead and hold it up high. How many of you have never sinned? Hmm. Never offended anybody? Never betrayed anyone? Never gossiped about a friend? Never lied? Never cheated? Never envied? Hmm. Wow. Well, it says the wages of, Romans, the wages of sin is death. No one can get into heaven unless they're perfectly righteous. So how are we made right with God? How are we saved? How do we get to go to heaven when we die? For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not from yourself. It's not because you were such a good person. It's not because of what you did. It's not because of anything about you. It is a gift of God so that no one can boast. It is by God's grace. It is his grace goodness. It is God's mercy. It is God's love for you that Jesus went to the cross to take away our sins that we all carry rather than punishing us for them, hmm, rather than getting angry and lashing out and whipping us and killing us like we deserve. hmm, Jesus took all of that, what we deserve on himself. In his resurrection, we have the promise that we are forgiven We are adopted by God. We are going to spend eternity with him in heaven. And it is a gift. It is the grace, the grace, the grace. All by grace. I'm going to elevate that. We're going to remember that. We're going to thank God for that grace every single day. Remember, as he's forgiven us, what? We can forgive other people. You know, James also talked about looking in the mirror. He said, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, just kind of comparing yourself to the people in the world, I mean, you think, well, I've never murdered anybody, never embezzled money, never cheated on my wife, never. You can actually sprain your elbow or your shoulder, patting yourself on the back. Hey, I'm such a good person. But James says, when you look in the mirror of God's law, which demands a perfect life, perfectly loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself, then you realize, wow, I'm a sinner too. So, again, if you're offended that I'm saying you can be unoffendable, because I don't know the crazy people in your life either, you can say, well, pastor, they lied to me. Well, you know, I've lied in my life too. Oh, man, he is so arrogant, I can't stand. You know what? I have, sometimes I can be a little arrogant prideful myself. Well, he stole that idea and took credit with the boss. You know what? I've stolen it before too. And actually, I'm going to quit my list of sins before you guys leave the church. So, <laughs> but you get the idea, right? You know what I'm talking about? The grace of God. So, to not be offended, to not have a hair trigger over all of these things, whatever your issue is, We're going to lower our expectations of other people. We're going to raise our gratitude for God's grace and be quick to listen and slow to speak. Very slow, like a turtle, to become angry. Because I've never seen a really angry person make a really big difference. And I don't want to just make a point. I want to make a difference. I don't want to just win somebody over to my side on some peripheral issue. I want to win a person over to knowing the one who has changed my life. And his name is Jesus Christ. He loves and he forgives all people, all of us messed up, crazy, offendable people. And so as a church, let's rise above it. Let's lead with love. Not with anger. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand. We'll pray. I have our blessing and our last song. Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And that is so good because uh, we sin each and every day.
Thank you for forgiving us and giving us a new, a new day, a new start, a new opportunity to hear your word and do it and to put it into practice. Lord, we all uh, have a, 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 a strong will uh, for this world, for this nation, for our church, for our community, uh, to, to follow you, to live rightly, to treat other people well. And we pray that uh, as we see sin, we see injustices, we see offenses, uh, that we would react first uh, by finding out how we can make a difference, um, how we can connect with those people so that they'll listen to us and they'll listen to your word and your truth in their lives uh, rather than trying to start uh, even more fights and arguments that, <laughs> that are already too numerous in our culture. Lord, do this for your spirit. The spirit of peace rest upon us and our community here. And again, allow us to share the goodness of you, the mercy that you have, the love that you have, and the grace you give us in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen.